This week on Maker Update, a boat that won't stop, rebuilding the future, cataclysmic dioramas, din rails, rotary encoders, and nimble squirrels. Hello and welcome back to Maker Update. I'm Tyler Weingarner and I hope you're doing great and staying inspired as we head towards the three-day weekend with this glorious spring weather. We've got another fantastic show for you, so let's check out the Project of the Week. Boats are a wonderful way to spend your time in the summer. The bummer thing about them is when your fuel is done and you need to come back to dry land. But what if you could just keep going? Peter Sreepel might have the answer to this question with his solar powered boat. So far there's two videos in this multi-part series and there's a lot going on here. Peter began with a vintage boat that he bought that had its fair share of problems. After stripping the boat all the way down to the bare metal hull, he could begin building the boat he actually wanted, something reminiscent of a 1930s hobbyist runabout, which meant building a new deck, a roof to put the solar panels on, and the control system for the electric motors. And when I meant that there's a lot going on here, just check out all the details. Look at this system for steaming these wooden beams so he can bend them into the shape that he wants. The first video ends with the boat functionally complete but running solely from battery power. It's a good system to test out how fast the boat is and what kind of load the electrical system is under at various speeds. He also experimented with a few different propellers, including ones that he 3D printed himself, to explore what speeds he could achieve with different motor loads. Remember, the goal here is to have a boat he can operate entirely on solar power. In the second video, he gets the boat operant under solar power. It's not terribly fast. With a full crew of himself, a cast of recognizable YouTubers, and his intrepid pup, he's able to hit about 5 miles an hour. But that's not a bad speed to go exploring some of the waterways of Florida with some of your pals. In the future, he does plan to make it go faster, so look forward to that in the future. In the meantime, it's a fun, gorgeous video with tons of great shop tips. Now for the news, we begin with the opening of the 2021 Hackaday Prize. The theme for this year is Refresh, Rethink, Rebuild. Our time in quarantine gave a lot of people opportunities to reframe their lives with new problems to solve. Now that we're looking towards the horizon again, what kind of world would you like to live in? Build hardware for the world you want. Refreshing our work from home lives, rethinking assistive technology, and redefining the robots that will help us in our daily lives. These are just some of the ideas to inspire you into the challenge. For more idea on how to participate, check the link down in the show notes. Also, a materials company called Braschem has just announced the production of 3D printable polypropylene. Aside from a few caveats about bed adhesion, it sounds like polypropylene is as easy to print as PLA but offers a few interesting new properties. It's better at resisting heat, can easily form watertight seals, and has considerably higher chemical resistance to acids and bases. It's also a lot less brittle than PLA, so you can use it to create living hinges that can survive through regular flexing. They're producing the material as filaments, pellets, and powder, so it should be available for just about any kind of printer. They're not the first to manufacture this filament, but there are not many others out there. It seems like it has some exciting properties, so it's great to have more people in the game. If you haven't seen it already, Mark Rober's squirrels are at it again, and he's built a brand new obstacle course to keep them away from his bird seed. Mark leaned really heavily into the theme of heist movies with this one, and each one of the obstacles that he created is reminiscent from some of Hollywood's biggest heists. It's not really a spoiler to say that the squirrels still got the best of him, despite all of his clever engineering. Maybe it's a testament to successful failure, or maybe we just want to cheer for these clever, adorable rodents. Either way, it's a fun watch. In a different expression of cinematic flair, For the Crafts shows how to make this incredible diorama of a meteor striking a building in a cityscape. I've seen a few dioramas like this before, but never the process. Seeing the different layers used, like the black resin for the city streets, 
or the separate resin casting with the embedded LEDs for the meteor and its smoke trail gives me a lot of different ideas for new processes. I also love the cleverness of hiding the wires for the LEDs in the demolished building so they can be routed at the bottom. It's brilliant. Depending on your methods of shop organization, drawers might be the blessing or the bane of your existence. However, this new design from Decay's Crafts might open a few new options for you. This is a design for a drawer that slides forward but then pivots down. Perfect for storage that's situated at eye level or higher. They provide all the CAD files for you to create your own, and I think I see a need for this in my own shop in the future. Finally, we have this video by Allison about making a robotic lamp, reminiscent of the one you see in logo sequences of Pixar films. Similar to the original character, she's basing it off of this traditional swing arm lamp. After adding a few servos, she's already achieved some strikingly lifelike and charismatic motion. And that's all before adding a camera and some open CV brains, so it can track and follow objects. Now for some tips and tools. DIN rails. Have you ever heard of DIN rails? Chances are you've seen these before, but unless you work in the telecom industry, there's a good chance you didn't know their name. In this video by Makers Mashup, I learned that these rails, normally used to mount equipment in phone closets, are a powerhouse for shop organization. All thanks to a huge ecosystem of 3D printed parts that allow you to hang tools, organize cables, mount Raspberry Pis, and so much more. Rotary encoders are one of the coolest control interfaces you can add to a project, at least until you realize how frustrating they are to work with. Timers, interrupts, and debouncing their signals ensure you're in for a headache every time. Which is why Adafruit has created this I2C rotary encoder so you never have to deal with these problems ever again. Like it says on the tin, it communicates with your project over I2C, and it has a SemiQt interface and libraries for CircuitPython and the Arduino IDE. Over on Make, I found this video from Caleb Kraft about replacing the polarized film in your SLA 3D printer. Apparently, one of his own 3D printers suffered a failure that could have resulted in the retirement of the machine. But after some painstaking work in removing the old film and properly orienting the new one, he was able to get the printer back in operation. There's a lot of good tips here. Check this one out if you own one of these printers. Over on Cool Tools, I recently reviewed the HomeRite Portable Spray Shelter. This is a collapsible enclosure used to contain the mess created by using spray paints or other HVLP sprayers. There's a few different sizes, but they're all intended to be used by folks who want to keep a tidy shop but don't have the space for a dedicated spray booth. Last but not least, kerf bending seems to be on the bucket list for just about any maker. But with all the math needed to determine the right radius, arc length, or the right glue to use, it's easy to pass it off to the next project. Loracomp's new video is an experimental approach to explore all the different possibilities with curve bending, using different tools, testing glues, and different processes. And Laura does a great job of demystifying the process. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, they have a new video up showing how to order PCBs through the DK Red service on the DigiKey website. It walks you through the process of using the PCB Builder tool, uploading the Gerber files and verifying your layers. It also takes a moment to walk you through verifying your design once you receive it. If you missed it, DK Red is DigiKey's own custom PCB service, offering high quality, low cost, and low minimum production PCB manufacturing. And that is going to do it for this week's show. That tip about DIN rails really got me thinking about shop organization and different ways to think about traditional tools. What's the best repurposing of an industry standard you've ever come across? Let us know down in the comments. As always, you can sign up for the Maker Update newsletter so you never miss a show. And of course, you should give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and pay a visit to our pals at DigiKey who make this show possible. Take care out there. We'll see you soon.